Welcome on board the Dunbrody. So what we are on right now is a replica ship and this was built right here in the Rus and launched in 2001. The original ship however was built all the way back in 1845 and she was built over in Canada and she was built over there because there was not enough timber in Ireland at the time to build a ship like this. So you might have noticed on the tickets that we gave you the name William Grace. It was his family who commissioned the ship to be built. So again, the ship was originally meant to be a cargo vessel. It was never ever meant to carry passengers. But with the onset of the famine, most of the cargo vessels sailing at the time were crudely outfitted to carry passengers as well. Um, so this was really good for the companies who were running the ships. Because before the famine, um, they would send uh, these ships over to the Americas empty to collect their cargo. But now um, they made a profit both ways of the journey. So it's really good for them, but not so much for the rest of us who were fleeing um, from desperation. Um, now, the ships that sailed during the famine, they were given a little bit of a nickname. So they were termed as cotton ships. And that is for the simple fact that it was not unheard of for anywhere from 20% up to 50% of the passengers on board to actually pass away and um, now that's a huge amount of people you could have up to 300 people on this small ship uh, we've got about 50 of us here today so um, we're taking up quite quite a big space especially when we have a look down below you'll see that it's not a whole lot of space for that amount of people so how they did it i really do not know um now there was some safer ship sailing and the dock really was one of the safest around at the time so for example we have records of a journey that set sail with 313 passengers on board the ship and on that journey only five passed away on board and they were buried at sea and another three passed away when when they were on land in canada whilst they were quarantined off so eight people in total bear in mind this is the 1800s that was really good for a ship of that era in general and it was certainly a lot better than some of the other ships that were sailing at the same time now we today on this journey we are poor people we are called steerage passengers this means we don't really have many priorities on board the ship so the first thing being is we are only allowed 30 minutes of fresh air up on the top deck a day that's all we are allowed and the rest is spent down below in near enough complete darkness um, 23 and a half hours maybe up to 300 people next to you it's going to be really uncomfortable down there claustrophobic hot smelly humid sweaty all sorts just not nice at all now we were also advised to bring food with us and it's going to be a long journey however our crops had failed and the other food in ireland at the time was just too expensive we could not afford it now the ship did provide us with some rations so this was stuff like flour oats that kind of thing so one member from each family was allowed to come up to the top deck for one hour to cook a little bit of food and they'd use this here so that is called a brazier essentially it's just an open fire so there was a couple of them out on the deck in queue up you might make a little bit of bread or oat cakes maybe porridge that's kind of all you could make with the rations that you were given not a whole lot more and then you bring it down below for your family to eat down there now during the storm we might allow it up here whatsoever it was far too dangerous that of course is an open fire not going to be allowed to be running and the hatchets there would be shut too so it's going to be completely dark downstairs during the storm but that also meant we could not come up here to cook our food but luckily the ship did provide us with something to eat during the storm called the ship's biscuits so these were baked by a professional baker before the journey set off and the ship brought them in so they were hard tack basically just flour and water mixed together not very appetizing at all but you'd really want to be eating it just to keep your stomach open for the next time you could eat a little bit of real food now before you ate them you had to tap them out because there was all sorts of creepy crawlies that made their way inside so mice, ants, weevils, maggots sometimes, all sorts so I guess uh, depending on the way you look at it and a little bit of protein for you there because unfortunately we are not given any meat as part of our rations on board the ship now there also would have been some first class passengers and luckily for them they had meat every single day and it was also cooked for them as well all of their food was cooked for them by the crew members um, now unlike us they did not have a time limit to when they could come up here for fresh air they were allowed whenever they wanted to except from during the storm of course because it was just far too dangerous so the ship herself then is 176 foot long and 28 feet at the widest point as she is a three masted bark so that's the type of ship she is so she has three masts has a middle mast at the back just behind her there the main mast here in the middle and this is around 100 foot tall from the deck we got on to the very very top so it's really quite tall and the four masts at the front of the ship there now you have the ship's wheel at the back and it's at the back because it's easier to see where you're steering from back there 
Now these ladder lifting things at the sides here, those are called rat lines. And the crew members use those just like ladders. That's how they climb up to the mast. And the ones where they're just ropes, where they're just kind of by themselves, those are just called lines. Now this here in the middle there is called the capstan. And inside the holes there, they would put in kind of these rods and they'd push it around. And that would pull heavy items up to the mast for the crew to use up there, okay? So I'm going to give you a little bit of a choice now. Usually we would head on to the front of the ship, um, but there's no cover down there. Um, so do you want to stay here and I'll talk about it and you can have a look for yourselves after. I think that might be the better thing to do. Yeah? Cool. No problem. Okay, so that little cabin there, that is the ship's kitchen. That is called the galley. And we have no access to that whatsoever as steerage passengers. But that is where the crew would pick for the first class passengers and the other crew members as well. So again, they had meat every single day. That would have usually been salted Baby pork or salted yeah. beef. Um, but when you have a look in there yourself, you might spot some fish inside the pans as well. So time to find the crew members did fish over the edge of the ship too. So they baked bread, so there was fruit and veg available, tea and coffee when they wanted. So all of the food for the first class passengers was prepared inside that little cabin and then brought down to the first class area, which is at the back of the ship where the first class passengers ate at the captain's table with the captain himself, so it's really luxurious compared to what we had. Now there also would have been some live animals kept on board the ship at, on the, uh, at the very, very front, on the top deck. Do you want to take a guess what animals we had? Just throw them at me. Chicken. Chickens, uh, pigs, and close to a sheep. Oh, oh, right. There you go, so three out of three. Now, I had some people the other day, I'm just going to add this in because I thought it was a, a little bit funny, um, but I told them they were farm animals and they were stuck on the pig. So I said, oh, it's pink. And about three people shouted out flamingo. So <laughs> <laughs> they lived on the farm, but like, oh, I just thought that was funny. Um, now, so we had chickens for their eggs, goats for their milk, and we would have had a pig or two. And there was a pig because they were the most efficient thing to eat. They could eat every single part, from the ear to the toes, the snout. Personally, not my cup of tea, but there you go. Um, now there's one more thing at the front of the ship and of course you can have a look for yourself afterwards but the, the ship's bell is at the very front and that bell is over 170 years old it's actually from the original Dun Dunbrody so we have her because the descendants of the Grace family kindly donated it to us when they heard about the project starting back in 2001 but the reason they had it in the first place is because all the way back in 1869 the Grace family sold the ship on to another company and at the time it was customary to keep the bell so that's what they did. Now only six years after that, in 1875, the original ship actually ran aground off the coast of Canada, somewhere by Labrador, and it was too badly damaged, so the new owners just left it there to rot over time. So the bell on the ship is all that remains of the original ship to this day. So we're very grateful that we have it, very lucky that we do. And um, maybe you will give it a ring of it mm -hmm. after the tour. So we're gonna head on down below now, and we're gonna gather in the middle. So. For those of you that are able to walk, there is a set of stairs there. So if you want to head down there and gather in the middle at the table, okay? And I'll assist you with the lift, whoever needs to. last the whole journey he did die on board and only a few days after he passed away Mrs White herself also passed leaving their five children all alone completely orphaned on board the ship so it's a, it's a real story they were real people um, now we do know for a fact that five children from the White family made it safely to America but we can't quite figure out what happened to them afterwards and that's probably because there was no birth certificates back then no passports or legal documents 
So what we think is maybe one family took one child, another took another, yeah, yeah. and they would have just adopted the surname of the family that they went with, which is why we can't find anything from our records. Mm -hmm. Now the youngest of the White family was baby Anne. She was only nine weeks old when she got on board ship, so very, very young. So luckily there must have been another nursing mother on board at the same time who would have taken her in to feed her and look after her, otherwise she wouldn't have survived the journey, no way. So again, it is a true story and I imagine loads of similar stories happened all the time on board ships like these. Again, the conditions that they went through are absolutely horrendous. Um, so, I'm going to tell you about the conditions of um, some of the areas down here. So we're going to actually start to shoot off with the first class area so you can have a look for yourself afterwards. And the first class area again is at the very back of the ship through those archways there. Now those archways wouldn't have been there, that would have been a solid wooden wall. We were completely separated from each other. So they would have had their own gangway in the middle of the room somewhere so they could get up and down when they wanted to. Um, now at the very back in the middle is the captain's table and that is of course where they ate with the captain. But there's two first class cabins in that area and those are the two at the very, very back of the ship. Uh, sorry, yeah, they are. Um, now there's one on your left and one on your right at the back. And inside each of those cabins is um, two bunks and for the toilet they would have used a chamber pot and a member of the crew would have emptied that for them when it needed to be. <laughs> going to reach that coffee. <laughs> Rotten apples. There's the dried fish. Because <laughs> there's that thing. Unless they can look at this one. This will actually go. Steer it, David. Yeah. You're holding it incorrectly. Like this. And then he and David turn around. Look near the wheel. Turn around. I don't like to go on the 